I'm Deacon Greg Olick, and I'm glad to be here with you today at the Life in the Spirit seminar. And I'd like to talk about two things. The first are our spiritual vital signs, and the second are the pillars of Christian spirituality. If you go to a doctor, what's the first thing that happens? Somebody comes and takes your vital signs. They take your blood pressure, your body temperature, and your heart rate. And they do that because those three things will tell the doctor immediately what your general physical condition is. Well, we do that at least once or twice a year. I know, every time I go to the doctor, that's done. But what about our spiritual vital signs? Do we ever take those? Well, we'll take them today. And they are faith, hope, and love, the theological virtues. They're, theo they're called theological virtues because they have to do with our relationship with God. The three of them come from that. So it's so important. First of all, let's talk about faith. Faith is all about relationship. I know that might sound funny, but think about this. What is the purpose and mission of the church? Why are we all here? It's because of relationship. The church is here to help people come to know God. And by knowing God, develop a relationship with God. And we're there to then help them grow that relationship more and more intimate every single day. And it results in authentic love of God and neighbor. So it's all about relationship. There was a time when I was looking for uh, a definition for faith. I, I, I knew the definitions from the dictionary and the catechism, and they're all good. But I was looking for something more profound to, st to share with my uh, adult faith formation students. And I found it in a, a very strange place. In my career in audiology, I spent a lot of time in universities that have audiology programs, and especially Auburn University. And I was there one day because I was teaching a class at, um, at, at 1 p.m. I got there at noon, and I was looking for my classroom. So I went into the Speech and Hearing Center, and there's no one there. They're all out to lunch. So I go in and out of every room looking for a faculty member who could tell me where my classroom is so I could set up. Anyway, one of the rooms that I went into looking for somebody from the faculty was a computer lab. It's a room just lined with computers. And there was nobody in there, so I'm on my way out, and I noticed that something was scrolling across the screens of the computers, and it was uh, uh, a, a message. And so I stopped just for a second to see what it was. I thought it had to do with something about maybe Auburn's football team. But no, it was a message that said this. It said, faith is a relationship of absolute trust, of fundamental confidence in the power and the goodness of God. And I said, wow, that's it. That's the best thing I ever heard. And I found it there at this secular university. Well, I finally found the director of the department. I told her, that's wonderful that that's there. And she said, yes, as long as I am the director of the speech and hearing department, that's the message I want my students to see. And uh, she was a, uh, well, she's retired now, though she still consults for them, and she's a devout Episcopalian. <laughs> anyway, that is, a, uh, that is absolutely it. Faith is a relationship, a relationship of absolute trust, a fundamental confidence in the power and the goodness of God. That's what we all strive for. Remember that. The next theological virtue that we'll look at is love. Hope is something that comes from faith and love. If we have those, then we have hope in the future. We don't see ourselves as doomed, no matter how bad things are. We still know that God is still in charge and that everything will work out for the good of those who love him. The Bible tells us that God himself is love. And in this picture that you see here, uh, it's, a, it's a picture of creation. God created everything and everyone out of love. And what he wants most of all from the peak of his creation, human beings, is a relationship, an intimate, loving, personal relationship. 
I put this slide up and it's entitled T. Voglio Bene. That's how the Italians say, I love you. But if you were to translate T. Voglio Bene directly into English, it would say, I want what is good for you. And that is authentic love, when we want what is best for the other person. Not for ourselves, but when we want what is best for the other person. The fullness of love is looking outward, not inward, looking outward towards the other person and seeking what is best for them. Right? That's true and authentic love. Authentic love is self-giving. Right? The Catechism calls love, like, describes love like this. To truly love is to will the good of another person. That's the type of love that is described in the New Testament as agape love. In Greek, there's several different words for love, like the love between men and women is uh, eros. It's where we get the word erotic from. In English, we only have one word for it. But in, in Greek, you can describe it better because there's four words. Well, agape love is the unconditional love of God. It's the love that uh, Paul describes in uh, his letter to the Corinthians, actually, in chapter 13. That's one, almost everybody's, uh, one of everybody's favorite scriptures. And John Paul II talks about living the law of the gift making ourselves a gift to another, especially a husband and wife. He says that man finds himself only when he makes himself a sincere gift to others. And Mother Teresa said, unless a life is lived for others, it's not worth living. And why is that? Well, we are all made in the image and likeness of God. And what is God? God's a community of self-giving love between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we are what we were created to be when we live that way it, as, as se in self-giving love. Because God is, an, is a community of infinite self-giving love. So we live like that when we live the law of the gift. We're living for what we were created to be. Okay, so now we've looked at our spiritual vital signs, right? Faith hope, and love. And now let's look at the pillars of Christian spirituality. They are prayer, study, community, and service. And we need every, every one of those in order to be, to have Christian spirituality at all. It's like the four legs on a chair. If all of them are there, the chair is stable. If one of them is missing, then you know, we've got to kind of steady the chair because it's unstable. If two of them are missing, well then we, the chair is very unstable and we practically have to hold the chair up in order to sit on it. If three of them are missing, and then it's practically impossible to sit on that chair. And of course, if all four legs are missing, then we're sitting on the ground. So that's how important these pillars of Christian spirituality are to our spiritual life. There's no spiritual life without all four of them. The first is prayer. And prayer is uh, communication with God. And how can we have a relationship, especially a personal, intimate, loving relationship with someone that we don't communicate with? We can't. In fact, family therapists tell us that what drives couples apart is the lack of communication between them. And scripture is all about prayer. I'm just going to share one scripture with you. This is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6 to 18. Paul says, rejoice only, always. Rejoice all, always. Pray continuously. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, he says pray continuously. How do we do that? Well, I find the answer in my favorite scripture verse, which comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it's verse 31. And it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. You see, 
if we live for the glory of God, then everything we do is a prayer and we offer it up. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Prayer is the first pillar of Christian spirituality. The next is study. Because what's studying? Getting to know God. Study scripture. Study the teachings of the church, the lives of the saints. Getting to know God more intimately. How could we possibly have a relationship with someone that we don't know? We can't. In fact, I often tell the story about when I first met Jan after we were dating just one week, I asked her to marry me, and she said, no way, Greg, what are you, crazy? <laughs> when I recovered from my disappointment, I, I asked her, well, well, why not? And she said, because I don't know you, and you don't know me. How can we have an intimate, loving relationship if we don't know each other? And so I said, oh, yeah, you're right. And two years later, I asked her again, and this time she said yes. So how important is it? We have to spend regular time in prayer, yes, and also in study, getting to know God. That's why I love theology so much, because theology is getting to know God. Second Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 15 to 17 says this, And how from infancy you have known holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is helpful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that every servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. <laughs> that is a tremendous recommendation for studying scripture. The third pillar of, of Christian spirituality is community. And Jesus knew this. What's the first thing he did when he started his public ministry? He gathered together a community, a community of disciples with the inner circle of apostles. Uh, because he knew that human beings are meant to live in community. If you want to punish your kid, what do you do? You send him to his room. You cut him off from the community of the family and he suffers. And so we do too where we're not connected with community. We are created to live in community. And we can do some great things for others on our own, but we can do more as a community. If we donate to Catholic charities for the victims of the hurricanes in Florida and, and in Texas, we'll do more because through the community of Catholic charities, uh, we certainly can provide a lot more than we could just by ourselves. Just an example. But the community that's very, very important for us is the community of the church, the local parish, the local diocese. Because when one or two are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. In community is where we celebrate the liturgy. And the book of Acts, this is in chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. It talks about the early Christian community, the very, very early Christian community from the very first day. So what does it say? This is after the, uh, right a after the day of Pentecost. Uh, it says, those who accepted his message, that's Peter's message, were baptized. And about 3,000 people were added to their number that day. That's the day of Pentecost when, pre when Peter gave his first homily on the streets of Jerusalem. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking the breaking of bread and to prayer, right? S celebrating the Eucharist. Uh, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. Community, so important. Don't think that there's Christian spirituality without the community of the church. And finally, service, right? Because how could you possibly imitate Christ without serving others? It's impossible. It can't be done. Uh, and so that's what we're all about as Christians, just like Jesus was all about that in his ministry. In fact, Matthew 25, what does it talk about? It talks about who will enter the kingdom of God, and it says to those who provided uh, help for others, for visiting the sick, for taking care of those in need, 
for feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. What did it say? Matthew 25, 40. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Come and enjoy the kingdom of heaven, prepared for you from the beginning of time. Right? Well, those are the four pillars of Christian spirituality. Prayer, study, community, and service. I add a fifth one for us Catholics, right? The fifth one is the sacraments, right? And, and they're all over scriptures. That's where the sacraments come from. They were each instituted by Christ himself and celebrated immediately, even in the early church, by the apostles themselves. In fact, it's Jesus who said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. And the thing about the sacraments, it helps us live the sacramental life. And what is that? What's a sacrament? A visible sign of God's invisible grace. When we live in such a way that we reflect the goodness of God to others, then we are a visible sign of God's invisible grace to everyone we meet. And that's living the sacramental life. Okay, so I'm almost done, so don't panic. But here's what we want to do. We want to now see how we're doing. So, look at this slide, faith, hope, and love, right? The spiritual vital signs. And honestly give yourself a rating. Rate your faith and how it compares to our definition. Faith is a relationship of absolute trust, of fundamental confidence in the power and goodness of God. I don't care if it's a one, two, or three, whatever it is, honestly, put a circle on it. And then the same thing for hope and the same thing for authentic self-giving love. How am I living the law of the gift, as John Paul II says? Add those up and put the total. Then when you're done with that, do this. Take the pillars of Christian spirituality prayer, study, community, service, and sacrament. And how are we doing with those? Do we have a regular prayer time set aside every single day? Are we studying scriptures, Catholic teachings, and other religious educational materials? Are we getting to know God? Are we communicating with God? Are we getting to know God? Are we active participants in the community of our parish? Right? Are we serving others? Uh, are we providing for the needs of others regularly? And are we regularly participating in the sacrament? I'm talking daily mass. I'm talking regular participation in the sacrament of reconciliation. Right? And are we living the sacramental life? Are we actually a visible sign of God's invisible grace to others? Okay, circle them honestly, absolutely honestly and add those up too. Now if you add both pages together and you get an 80, then I'm going to have to contact Archbishop Gregory because you, your life will have to be studied for a declaration of, uh, of sainthood. Okay? But whatever it is, whatever the total is, that's good. It's a good thing to know because that's your total today. It'll be different tomorrow. It'll be different to next week and next month as you grow in your intimate, loving relationship with Jesus through the vital signs and our, uh, the pillars of Christian spirituality. The thing to do is to do this exercise once, once a week or once a month or once a quarter, whenever, and just see if you're growing in that relationship and if that number continues to rise. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day here at the, uh, at the seminar in living in the spirit. Thank you.